UMD's president is also addressing disturbing instances of hate. The university says anti-Semitic flyers were found near off-campus housing, including some of the Greek houses. Tonight, President Daryl Pine sent a letter to the community saying, quote, we reject and condemn all acts of hate, bias, and racism against the Jewish community. The university is planning a solidarity workshop and urging people to report any hate or bias on or off campus. Now, I want to say one more thing about this. These episodes of anti-Semitic and racial intolerance at UMD are exhausting. Now, I say that as somebody who went to school in College Park in the late 90s and graduated with a journalism degree from Maryland. This garbage was happening way back when I was on campus and long before that, too. Now, the community has long demanded that the university step up and address this and work to find solutions. Well, since my time there, they've created bias incident support services and the Office of Civil Rights and Sexual Misconduct. In 2019, according to the UMD student newspaper, The Diamondback, the zip code for College Park recorded the highest number of hate bias incidents of any zip code in the state. Can I suggest that maybe UMD isn't the genesis of this problem? The Southern Poverty Law Center reported in 2019 that most hate bias incidents are actually happening in middle and high schools. A report that the SPLC did in 2018 found no one was disciplined in 57% of hate and bias incidents in secondary schools, and that nine out of 10 times, no one even denounced the bias to the offending student. Hate starts somewhere. And if it starts in middle or high school, the state of Maryland, not just the university, needs to start addressing that. Let's own our future. And that starts with our kids. We'll be right back. Fortunately for the district, Congressman Andy Harris is too busy to keep injecting himself into D.C.'s business. He's tried to decertify the 2020 election, and he nearly got into a fist fight on the House floor earlier this year. Let me tell you this. D.C. has been missing out because of Harris. Big time. Forbes reported in March that legal weed sales in the U.S. hit $17.5 billion in 2019. Now, when you've got Congress treating D.C. like a territory and shortchanging us on federal dollars, like in the first COVID relief bill, we need all the Sheba-generated Skrilla we can get our little green hands on. Taxing marijuana sales would bring an enormous injection of money that the district could put toward badly needed social plans and support for things like grocery stores in the wards seven and eight food deserts. And the plans being floated by the mayor and council chairman would empower people with past marijuana convictions, veterans and the economically disadvantaged to get first dibs on licenses to grow and sell. A recent Pew Research poll found that 91% of Americans support medical and recreational marijuana and nearly 65% approved DC's Initiative 71 back in 2014, which legalized a small stash for personal use. It is long past time DC control its own destiny. So what else is standing in the way? Maryland's General Assembly convened in Annapolis this morning, the first day of a week-long special session. Now, if you follow me on social media, or if you're lucky enough to share a household with me, then you know that I'm paying very close attention to the top item on the agenda for this little shindig, the congressional redistricting of Maryland. And I'm sure that many of you are, too, because you know what gerrymandering is, and you know that it sucks. But for those of you who don't know what's going on or don't quite understand what's at stake, no worries, Longo's got you. So let's take a walk through it. Maryland has eight congressmen, eight congressional districts. Right now, we've got seven Democrats and one Republican. Here's what those boundaries in the state look like right now. Straight up, kind of a mess. All of these border lines look like my kids got together with some crayons and drew squiggly lines all over my beloved state. Now, these lines are about to be redrawn. It happens in all 50 states every 10 years after the census. All right, so what's the best way to do that? Do we just simply cut Maryland into eight equal size pieces? Five, six, seven. That's Maryland cut into eight spots, but now you've got Baltimore, the same thing as down at the Southern Bay. You've got Montgomery County and Frederick sharing a community. Is, is, is that fair? Well, we're not going to do that. Fancy that. We've actually got two main groups in Maryland that have put forward new maps for consideration. On one side is a map proposed by the Maryland Legislative Redistricting Commission. That's a partisan group made up of state lawmakers. On the other, a map from the Maryland Citizens Redistricting Commission. 
an independent group with an equal number of people from both parties. Now, full disclosure, the second commission was created by Republican Governor Larry Hogan. Now, both maps were graded for fairness and geographic compactness by the Princeton Gerrymandering Project. That's an independent organization devoted to fair representation through redistricting reform. Here's what they graded, F and A. They graded the Legislative Commission map in F, while the Citizens Commission map got an A. All right, now I'm an adjunct professor of journalism at the University of Maryland, so I do a lot of grading. Here's the summary. One of those plans leads to a chance for equal representation for all the citizens of the old line state, and the other does not. Guess which one the legislature favors? The same one likely to pass, the one that got an F. Now, demographically, Maryland is 55% Democratic, 24% Republican, and 20% unaffiliated. Those numbers according to the State Board of Elections. Now, again, right now, seven Democrats, one Republican representing Maryland in Congress. That new map could lead to an 8 nothing Democratic sweep. So here's the question. Is it fair that all eight districts in Maryland should be represented by Democrats? Should 55% of the population, be they Democrat or Republican, have total control of any state's congressional delegation? Now you know why I'm paying attention. Gerrymandering, the process creating those squiggly lines for political advantage, it's a nationwide problem. In fact, Texas got sued just today over its maps. Allegations that they discriminate against Hispanic voters. Gerrymandering is a political tool used by both parties. In each case, the question remains, what's being done in Maryland is it fair? I know what I think. Why don't you tell me what you think? Reach out to me on all my social media platforms. Email me at alongo at wsa9.com. I want to know what you think. We want to share your comments here on the show throughout the week.